Hey guys, welcome back to another Fly Tying Tuesday with Avid Max. My name is Max and today we're going to be tying the Russian River Fly, or better yet, the improved Russian River Fly. This particular fly uh, is made for flossing sockeye on the Russian River and the Kenai River in Alaska. Um, it's typically tied on a little bit longer shank, usually like a 4X or a 5X long shank um, with straight bucktail just kind of flaring out real simple tie uh, it just meets the regulations there of having to have material on a hook you can't just fish a bare hook um, and uh, it adds some visibility uh, so you kind of know where your fly is at as you're trying to floss these sockeye um, i like this particular style because you got a nice big eye on this hook which is the x series all-purpose um, from umqua um, real nice, really good, strong, kind of saltwater hook. Um, won't bend out on you, and typically you're fishing, you know, 30 to 60 pound line, so not worried about breaking off, and it's easy to feed through uh, this big eye. And uh, you can use black or white, pretty much any color thread, doesn't necessarily matter. Like I said, it's not too much about the presentation of this fly, it's uh, kind of more meeting the regulations and um, having a hook strong enough to hold up against some of these bigger pulling fish. So lay a little bit of zap down on the, the shank there, start making wraps and snip out our tag here at the end. And go to about the barb and kind of seal up the rest of that zap on the shank. So now I've got some crystal flash in uh, pearl. Uh, you can use any color crystal flash you want and this is just one color combination. Uh, I really like pink or like fluorescent pink um, or um, kind of a more like lime um, yellow color. Uh, this is obviously like chartreuse all around uh, minus the crystal flash but you could also use the the lime crystal flash, just the pearl, is nice to kind of add a little bit of difference in the fly. Uh, you could also use this fly for fishing coho, you know, later on in the year. A um, little bit smaller than, you know, you typically use, um, but definitely enough to make something angry to, to eat it. So I've got a probably, you know, a dozen or so strands of the crystal flash here, and I'm just going to put that around my thread and have it and slide it down to the shank, make a wrap, secure it. Tighten my thread up a little bit and make some tight wraps, secure that crystal flash down. And we'll do one behind to kind of help prop it up a little bit. So, got our crystal flash in there, nice tail, bright, create some, um, and that's another thing, you know, just because uh, they're not necessarily eating once they enter the fresh water, uh, if something pisses them off, uh, they'll be more inclined to, you know, feel it out with their mouth. So now I'm going to take some cactus chenille, uh, this is the medium size, you could probably do the large size, but I think the medium is just a nicer transition, I'm going to pull off some of my crystal flash or my um, cactus chenille so that the actual braid or thread that holds it all together is exposed and I'm going to capture that and work it back to my crystal flash. Secure that in there and then work my thread up leaving a little bit of room behind the eye there and then we're just going to wrap this on the shank trying to make sure that we're not exposing any of the thread underneath Just up against one another and capture that with our thread Just 
snip out our tag here. Make sure everything's secured down. So now we've got our polar reflector flash. Uh, we want to make sure that we tie this in, that it kind of has a natural, um, you know, wave to it. Uh, we want to make sure those fibers are going back so it just kind of lays down and we're just making a hackle uh, out of this synthetic material here. So I'm going to tie the, the core or the braid actually directly down to the shank. Working it back a little bit so that we can work our way up and leave ourselves some room to tie it off behind the eye. So kind of keep going the direction so that everything's laying back is our hackle. And keep preening it back. Same thing, button it up against each wrap that you make. And we'll get one more in there. And then we'll capture it. Capture it. Okay, pull everything back again. Make some real tight wraps right behind the eye. Snip out the remaining. Pull everything back. Put a little zappy gap on my thread here. And you want to make sure that when you're putting zappy gap or any kind of super glue on your thread, you're typically holding it at somewhat of an angle. Maybe when it's like a 90 degree angle coming back to you. Um, just so that when the beads, uh, it kind of beads up on the thread, you can kind of see it there, um, that it doesn't slide down into the, the eye of your, your bobbin. So make those wraps. Really securing that zappy up on there and then we'll do a quick whip finish. Pull everything tight. Snip out my thread. Clean up some stragglers and then I'm going to cut the tail to about the length of the body there. So real quick easy tie, um, you know keeping it simple because you are going to tie a lot of them. Um, if you're swinging for sockeye often, you know you lose them, they get damaged, whatever. So nice wide gap on the hook, big eye. Um, things that I uh, found to be important when you're um, fishing for sockeye. So, there you have it. Russian River, improved Russian River fly.